name's Phil, and I'm going to be talking about high-performance computing today. High-performance computing clusters um, are characterized by many cores and processors. They use lots of memory. They have high-speed networking, and they have large data stores. And this is all shared across multiple rack-mounted servers. And this article describes a simple stack that could be the starting point for your own HPC cluster. A little bit of background on these. Um, high-performance computing has been well-known as a method for government labs and universities to push the limits of science. I know everyone's trying to use like the biggest, best computer to create the answer to you know the universe. <laughs> but uh, this has become a tool for creating products and content, solving problems, and optimizing processes. Uh, it's used for literally everything. Most people would be surprised to learn that high-performance computing has touched everything from coffee to bathing suits to washing machines, and the list continues to grow. Of course, there are more traditional areas to pretty much use in our daily lives. Uh, they use uh, biosciences and stuff, where human genome data is ciphered into biomolecules and studied to better understand and improve the quality of life. If this was tried to be done on like one computer, it would take, it would just be uneven. You can't even do it. So this basically uses all computing resources and power to find like answers and do data analysis for stuff that you couldn't really do any other way. Um, something for another example is oil discovery. Uh, basically, every time you're like, oh, I want to drill for oil, you got to use that data. And nowadays, you can't just go drilling anywhere. You have to use all the data and resources you have to pretty much calculate the best area to drill. And um, even weather forecasts that we come to rely on are the result of many high-performance computing cycles running 24-7. The strategy behind high-performance computing is to divide and conquer. And by dividing a complex problem into smaller component tasks that can be worked on simultaneously, the problems can be solved more quickly. You can kind of relate this to I don't know, group work. So if a class, you have like all this stuff to do for a project, it's a lot easier to you know, designate the workload out to multiple people, kind of similar to that. And this can help save time and resources as well as monetary costs. A typical HPC computing system consists of one master node and multiple compute nodes connected via standard network interconnects. All of the nodes in a typical HPC run an industry standard operating system, which usually offers substantial savings over proprietary operating systems. Basically, you know, that you can use Linux to do this and run all the computers together, and it's a tried and proven system, and you don't have to spend a lot of money trying to get custom software or even some expensive software that's already available. Stuff that's out there free. Um, the master node of this cluster acts as a server for the network file system, job scheduling, security, and acting as a gateway to end users. And this master node assigns each of the compute nodes with one or more tasks to perform as the larger task is broken into subfunctions. As a gateway, the master node allows users to gain access to the compute nodes. So, as you can see from this diagram, a user basically is like, I want to do A. Well, the master node gets that signal and that request then figures out which computer it wants to, or which of the other nodes it wants to work with, sends that task through the network switch to the other node. That node completes its task, gives back the appropriate data to the network switch, and then passes it on to the master node, which then passes it on to the user. Pretty cool stuff. Um, user programs that run on a cluster are called jobs, and they are typically managed through a queuing system for optimal utilization of all available resources cool thing about these nodes are they just um, they just sit there you know what I mean like that they're doing their job so they don't have to have a keyboard or a mouse or video card or monitor so you can basically streamline and use the best quality components to make your best processor and your best computer with as little money as possible um, and basically access to all these client nodes is provided via remote connections through that master node um, the article continues with the rest of the instructions on how to set up one of these things um, but at this point, there's no real reason to go into depth on all the details. It's a lot of code, and you can just copy and paste. Um, just put a link in the details, uh, comments below, and you'll be able to read more about it. Um, but as you see from this picture here, you've got one massive system running as basically one computer for all intents and purposes. Um, as you can see now, this basically has the equivalent of 280 gigabytes of RAM and 136 processors. And that's really awesome. I mean, I can't really imagine many problems that you would have that you'd not be able to work through having some kind of workstation or access to power like this. Um, the article here uses this spec sheet, but it just seems kind of confusing for the average user. So I just want a little detail on a smaller setup. Uh, here's a, a view of what you would 
see if you were actually working with one of these things. Once it was all completely set up, you can see the number of uh, nodes here over here. And then you got your head nodes. 